When you eat fat, you're full. Mm -hmm. When you eat carbs, you're not full. There's no signal from carbohydrates to tell you you're full. Okay, first question. What impact does sugar have on the body and specifically the heart? 50% uh, of the US population now is diabetic or pre-diabetic. So what does that mean? Pre-diabetes and diabetes is actually sugar poisoning. If we were to measure someone's blood and say, oh, you have added levels of lead in your blood, you have lead poisoning. The answer would be to remove the lead from the diet. Okay, no more paint chips. Don't lick the windowsill. We have patients who have diabetes and pre-diabetes. The answer is to remove the sugar. So how do we do that? Well, we have to identify what is a sugar. And a sugar is a carbohydrate. We really want patients to reduce their carbohydrate intake until the sugar corrects. And if it's not corrected, that can specifically impact the heart. So let's just say diabetes, which is elevated blood sugar, pre-diabetes, the number one cause of cardiovascular disease, number one cause of kidney disease in America, number one cause of amputations in America, number one cause of blindness in America, probably the number one cause of hypertension in America, the number one cause of obesity, in America, probably the number one cause of gout and gastroesophageal reflux disease. So you can see this constellation of chronic diseases which are driven largely by sugar. And when we simply correct those issues, these things largely go away. Uh, can you explain intermittent fasting? Absolutely. The ultimate low carb diet is actually no carb. It's not consuming food. And what we found is people who cut out, let's say breakfast, or they'll eat dinner very, very early, like at three or four o'clock, what you see is a longer interval of time between caloric intake. What that allows the body to do is if blood sugar falls, insulin levels in the body falls, and insulin is the hormone that causes weight gain. So what happens is your insulin levels get very, very low because your blood sugar falls. You start burning fat as your fuel source. This results in weight loss. It also changes our body's insulin levels. And if we're constantly eating food and our insulin levels are constantly high, we become what's called desensitized to insulin. And insulin is the hormone that causes weight gain. In intermittent fasting, those levels can fall and people can lose weight more easily. What advice do you have for patients having a hard time eating well or regularly exercising? To start an exercise program or eating well, we just have to take the first step. And what that is is saying, well, what do I hope to achieve? And if it's health, it's actually reducing the sugar in the diet and then just going for a short walk. It's funny, it doesn't require a lot of exercise to be healthier. 30 minutes a day of walking five days a week really was a sweet spot. What we found really changed people's long-term outcome. This has been Off the Cuff with me, David Guaria. We'll see you next time.